know, AFM has been working on finish line solutions for 35 years. At this point, there are some significant changes taking place in the industry. For the past four days, we've been working with the uh, Work Physiology and Exercise Metabolism Laboratory here at the University of Montana. Uh, we are working on comparing different technologies, different choices, trying to understand exactly how runners react to them, how their bodies react to them, so that we can match that with the needs of our event customers. My name is Brent Ruby. I'm a research professor here at the University of Montana, and I serve as the director of the Montana Center for Work Physiology and Exercise Metabolism. Our research center has been focused on trying to look at different impacts that the environment has on the body in terms of heat stress, thermal regulation, how the muscle adapts to different environments, and how the body recovers under different environmental conditions. Part of what we do with AFM Heat Sheets is help them improve their technologies and provide them feedback and suggestions on what works better based on the data we collect. They want to know the outcome, good or bad, for them, and they're going to take that information and use it to improve a product. A lot of times when we're doing research, once we're finished, nothing much happens. What we did in this study is we provided a controlled exercise stress in our environmental chamber so as to mimic or generate a similar core temperature that we would anticipate after a marathon. We're trying to simulate the normal post-race environment. They're going to eat. They're probably going to call someone or send a text to tell their family and friends that they've completed it and they had a good time or they're cold or they feel good. And so we're trying to get all of that included into this 30 minutes of walking after they've completed their run. So we measure temperature in three different locations. We have a rectal temperature that we use to monitor core temperature values. We have two different skin temperature sites that we've selected on the upper body, one at the front of the chest wall and one at a standardized site on the upper back. Once we had eight tested, we did some quick statistics and we saw that there was already a difference in the two capes as far as uh, chest skin temperature goes. And we didn't think it was necessarily the material, it was more of how the capes were being worn. And so we made some quick decisions to seal up the armholes and to make sure that the heat sheet cape had more coverage across the chest by just adding one small piece of Velcro. So I'm wearing a skin temperature sensor on the same location that the study participants wore it on the chest wall. And I'm hovering right around 35 degrees Celsius. So what we were interested in is looking at how the individual's skin temperature response was altered after running in a cooler environment. Any garment that's designed to be draped over a runner after a race like that should be designed not to elevate skin temperature, but rather to maintain skin temperature and keep it from dropping to about 30 degrees Celsius. So we've shown that the skin temperature responses are quite similar between these two different garments. Once we get over that hurdle and realize that we can keep people safe with a much lighter garment design or cape design, that allows us to look at the important question of logistics. How can we effectively distribute these things as rapidly as possible to keep people in that narrow window of safety and comfort and maintain happiness at the end of this event as soon as possible. From a safety perspective, from a medical perspective, and from a logistical perspective, this really seems to be a superior product.